I'm doing my mum's recipe. Mm. It's made with smoked haddock, mainly for flavour, not too much. A good quality white fish. Obviously, we're all into sustainability at the yeah. moment, so we're going with something like pollock and going to do them with peas, egg and a, and a mashed potato top, so very, very classical. I mean, it's not so classical, but it is the northeast in the sense of we're going to be using kippers for that smoked element. Right. And what we're going to serve with that is basically crab, mussels, some king prawns. Kenny starts by getting his kippers ready to poach. What I'm going to do is do the old classical way, which is jug kipper. Yep. You know, you normally put it into a jug, yep. cup it with some hot water, and just let it poach for about five, six minutes. So we're going to do something very similar. The kippers are hot smoked, so they just need to be warmed through. Kenny places them in a pan of hot water and leaves to steam. This makes it easier to remove the bones and flake the fish and will also create a delicious stock for his sauce. On to his mussels. Kenny has sweated diced shallots, fennel and celery. A little splash of white wine. Yep. Just for acidity. Mm -hmm. He then adds the mussels and some fish stock and leaves them to cook for two or three minutes or until they have opened. So these mussels are starting to open up now. Yep. And what I'm going to do now is just drain them off. Yep. They're so quick, aren't they? Once the mussels have drained, Kenny gets on with his white sauce. Equal quantities of butter and flour. And I want to cook that to a sandy texture, which will take about three, four minutes to basically cook the flour and the butter out. Not to miss a trick, Kenny is using the cooking liquor from the mussels and kippers instead of the usual milk to make his white sauce. He gradually adds to the flour and butter, whisking continually to prevent lumps. So, Mark, as you can see, the sauce is getting a lot more lighter now. Yeah. A lot more glossy in colour. Yeah. And a lot more of a, a nicer sauce consistency. Yeah. I'm going to yep. finish with a little bit of cream just to enrich it. Yeah. Kenny then adds a squeeze of lemon and a dollop of whole grain mustard. This adds a little bit of heat as well as a little bit of texture. In the meantime, the kippers have mm. drained and I'm going to carefully pick those down in a minute. Lovely. So we haven't overcooked the kippers, but it's yeah. enough to... In the trick we normally do is just try and take the centre bone and just try and pull it all the way down. Yeah. And lovely. the majority of the bones will come out. While Kenny prepares the kippers and mussels for his dish, Mark gets started on his fish pie. He started with the poaching liquor for his fish and has already brought milk and cream up to heat. Uh, and into that, I'm going to put some aromatic. So the same sort of thing, if you're making like a bread sauce, you know, the similar sort yeah. of thing you'd put in there. Uh, classic onion salad with cloves, that goes in there. Um, bay leaves, I mean, four or five in there. Give it a really... I mean, I, lo I really love that flavour of yeah. bay leaves, obviously. Well, that's actually the classic way to do it as well, yeah. the studded onion. Just bring that up to the heat. And that's our, that's our poaching liquor. Yeah. So we've got the um, smoked haddock. Here, a lightly smoked haddock. Always use undyed. Definitely. Rather than that bright yellow stuff. It's a natural product as well. Mark cuts up the smoked haddock and the pollock into bite-sized pieces ready to be poached. Obviously, you can use any um, good, sustainable white fish. Yeah. Um, we're using pollock, because that's pretty good at the moment. Um, Coley is an amazing one as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got two-thirds um, white fish, and, yeah. or pollock in this case, and one-third um, of the smoked fish, because I want a subtle undertone of the smokiness, nothing too strong. The fish needs to poach for a couple of minutes or until it is just cooked, so Mark turns his attention to the all-important potato topping. It's very important to have a nice, smooth mashed potato. Yeah. Mark is using a potato ricer, which he thinks is the key to smooth, fluffy mash and gives a better result than a standard masher. Right, so we'll rice our potatoes through. Mm -hmm. This gives you, obviously, no lumps and a lovely, creamy, velvety potato. So you use any particular variety of potatoes for your, your mash, or...? Uh, yeah, I mean, use something very flowery, like, a, like this is a Maris Piper. Yeah. Um, it's more forgiving as a mash, you know, you, a Maris Piper, because it's just nice and soft. Next, Mark adds plenty of butter and seasons with salt before adding a ladle of fish poaching liquor to loosen the mash and add flavour. So I'm looking for, like I said earlier, soft texture, mm -hmm. but not like, you know, not, not like a puree. This is, yeah. this is a mash, not a pom puree. Yeah. Right. So you're going to add the egg yolks as for, to, to help with that uh, caramelisation to it? Yeah, egg yolks in, because um, then that's how it goes golden brown. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that in there. And you've got to, got to beat it quite quickly when it's in there. And it, it will soften the potato up now, but actually as it cooks, it will firm mm -hmm. up and kind of cook it together. Right, so that's the texture we're looking for. Yeah. That's a good workout. So it just kind of softly drips off there. Mark seems happy with his mash. Let's hope the judges agree. Next, he removes and drains the poached fish. Right, so I'm just going to leave that there to cool, uh, and then we're going to be ready to make our pies. Brilliant. Kenny is sure his kippers will give his pie the advantage, while Mark is banking on his mum's more homely dish. But which fish pie will reel the judges in? 